Gold Rush and the Chinese by Emma, Maddie, Jorgen, and Tyler. Yeehaw! In 1848, a carpenter named James Marshall was building a sawmill on the American River in North California. Suddenly, he spotted something shining in the water. It's a chicken nugget. Oh wait, a gold nugget. Sorry, I'm a little hungry today. That's how it all begins. Okay, anyways, typical miners were young and were most all men. Most miners, the 49ers, were normally not all prepared, just a shovel and some other small accessories. The reason for this was that they thought that they would just get rich by finding gold and buy their own things. Turns out that many miners did not get rich because there was huge competition between each miner. It, it was also difficult to find. Because the gold was so hard to find, miners spent long, hard days searching and searching until they maybe find what they are looking for. This is such a waste of time. I'm going back home. In the areas where the mining happened, the prices started to rise. Did you know to buy a biscuit during the gold rush, it cost $10? It doesn't sound like much, but if they were to keep the same price today, it would now cost this $250. Hey, that's pretty legit for such a yummy biscuit like that one right there. Nasty. The Chinese also wanted to get rich. At first, the Chinese were welcomed. Gold mining became more difficult, so the attitude towards the immigrants changed and ended up very bad. It became so bad, the 49ers would beat up the Chinese and burn down their houses. I don't like y'all. The Americans called the government to drive the foreigners out of the gold field. As the tax collectors arrived in the camps, most of the foreigners left some Chinese peeps, still stayed, and paid their taxes. Wow, they're just going to take all of our gold. Darn tootin'. Most Chinese that arrived at the gold rush hoped to go back home rich. On the camps, on the camps it was rough. Most miners fought for their territory of where the gold was. Many things went wrong, such as murders, fearful accidents, bloody deaths, mobs, whoopings, hanging, attempt suicide, and last of all, a fatal duel. Don't forget the spankings. By 1852, the gold rush was over. While it lasted, about 250,000 people flooded into California. The Native Americans faced a very rough time through the gold rush years. Between 1848 to 1870, warfare and disease reduce the peeps numbers from about 150 to 30,000. To addition, many Californians had lost their land to newcomers. California had enough people to become the, become the first state in the far west. The, the new Californians helped to transform what some people call the golden state into diverse land of economic opportunities. The gold rush and the manifest destiny go go well together because the manifest destiny is like westward expanding and that's what the gold rush is all about. Moving west and starting over. The gold rush is when people are hoping to get rich off of gold and buy a house and land with all of the money. And the manifest destiny is when everybody's moving west and they want to start all over. And if they, if they get rich off gold, then they can pretty much start all over. And that's why I think the gold rush and manifest destiny go good together. Our sources was a U.S. textbook.